um, when we read um, chapter 13, we're getting ready to read chapter 14 now, um, we had left uh, Crocker and Rick were out on a mission leading a pretty big platoon. I think he said like 250 men, if my memory serves me correctly. And um, they're currently being fired upon by the enemy, and they're, they've had to um, hunker down in a rice paddy. And I showed you a picture of what a rice paddy looks like. And um, as they're doing that, as they're hunkered down in the rice paddy, they are um, coming under fire with leeches like the ones that I showed you last week in the picture right here have started um, that live. They live in these rice paddies in the water. I told you they like the moisture. They've started to um, fasten onto their body. And Rick's got one on his cheek and he knows Crocker's got some on her. And, um, but they don't have time to take them off because they, you can't just pull them off. Uppy, um, one of the officers with Rick, just told him you can't pull them off because you might leave their jaws embedded in your skin and that would cause a big infection. So they're still under fire. There's still danger. So they've had to just move on and leave it. And uh, so we'll see in chapter 14 how they deal with what's going on. Cracker was thirsty. She looked at Rick and sent him the thought, but he just repeated, th search. Some of the leaves in the jungle were bigger than her. She stopped a moment to sniff at a leaf, just because it was strange and big. It was as if she'd shrunk. She had a vague notion that Rick wouldn't understand why she was sniffing at it, but she had to know. What kind of thing was this huge leaf? Now, you remember um, when we read before, she was talking about being thirsty. He also didn't have time to give her a drink, and she tried to lap up water out of the rice paddy. He wouldn't let her because he said the water was stagnant. It could have bacteria in it that would make her sick. And he had to give her water out of the canteen, but he didn't have time because, again, they were under fire. Rick caught up with her and squatted beside her. Got something? What you got? Nothing, actually. She lifted her nose in the air and breathed deeply, the way she did when she wanted to know what was going on. This was different from the way she took in air when she was just breathing. All she knew was that the air went someplace different when she was just breathing versus when she was trying to figure out a scent. A huge variety of new smells traveled back through her nose and filled her head. Her head was so filled with these smells that she kind of became them for a moment. Just like when, just like she sometimes kind of became Rick, she realized he was still waiting for her. She wagged her tail at him and then walked away. He fell back. She knew where he was without even looking at him. All of a sudden, Cracker heard a noise that sounded like a really loud squirrel. She pulled toward the noise while Rick said, stay, stay. It was too late. Raphael was running forward, and all the men were holding their guns and aiming toward where Cracker was pointing. Rick spotted a monkey swinging away in the distance. Raphael hissed, what is it? Monkey, it's nothing. It just about gave the whole company a heart attack. Rick could hear Raphael swearing to himself as he fell back. Rick wanted to jerk on like Cracker's harness. But dogs didn't understand a correction unless it came directly after the infraction. Instead, he knelt in front of her and met her eyes. This is serious, okay? Jungle foliage kept pricking at Rick, but he rolled up his sleeves anyway. Some of the guys had taken off their shirts. Scratches already covered their bodies, but it was better than passing out from the heat. A trail had already been worn through the forest. Cracker smelled other people on the trail, but not like the people Rick knew. A couple of times, one of those black sticky things dropped onto her from the leaves above. She quickly shook it off. Rick didn't take his eyes off her. He'd heard that leeches sensed soldiers' heat and movement and would let go of the leaves when you walk through the forest. Every now and then, several at once rained down in Rick's path. He could hear them dropping behind him, too. He stopped just once to glance back. He wasn't supposed to take his eyes off Cracker, but for one minute there, the men moved so quietly that he doubted anybody was following him. It was spooky as heck that 150 guys could move so silently. That meant the enemy could do the same. Raphael trailed him by about seven yards, and behind that, the men walked single file down the trail. They never bunched up. When Rick turned back around, Cracker's ears were flicking. Intensity and focus washed through Rick. He felt about a thousand times more focused than he could ever remember feeling during training. 
Cracker didn't stop walking after her ears flickered, and Rick decided her alert had been, hadn't been strong enough to stop the whole company. Her ears flickered again, and again Rick debated halting everybody, but Cracker kept walking, so he kept walking. This was different from training. Now he had to interpret Cracker even more exactly, had to understand precisely what each flick of her ears meant. Otherwise, if he stopped the company too often, they might think he was crying wolf and not take Cracker seriously. And if he didn't stop the company when there was real danger, men might die. He felt sick to his stomach. When he'd saved that kid's life a long time ago, he had no time to think. Now time seemed endless. The lives of all these men, of himself and of Cracker, depended on how well he understood the meaning of Cracker's every movement. He knew that if he failed, he would be tormented by guilt for the rest of his life. But the moment passed and he was concentrating on Cracker again. Every so often, one of her ears flicked, but that was probably because of a mosquito or small bug that he couldn't see. They covered about 100 yards in 20 minutes, which Rick had heard was pretty standard for a hot area in heavy jungle. Boy, he never would have guessed it would be such hard work just studying his dog. Once in a while, she would stop to meet his eyes. He knew that the entire company was staring at them. Then after one such meeting of the eyes, she abruptly sat, almost as if Rick had commanded her to do so. Rick felt so shocked, he retched. He hurried to, to her, but made sure not to pass her. He knelt down. What you got, girl? What you got? Retched, guys, kind of means like he kind of gagged a little bit, like he was going to throw up. It made him so nervous. Cracker knew exactly what what you got means, meant. She turned to look at the ground in front of them, then turned back patiently to Rick. Rick stared at the ground. He didn't see anything but a bunch of dead leaves. Slowly, half an inch at a time, he raised his eyes, searching out a tripwire. He did that twice, but didn't see a wire. He didn't know what to do. He didn't see anything out of the ordinary. He even tried sniffing the air, as if that might help. He wondered whether he should turn and signal Raphael to come forward. He knew everybody was watching him in Cracker, waiting for a signal from him. What should he do? All right, all right. This time he started out about 10 feet in the air, then moved his eyes slowly down, searching for the tripwire. He still didn't see anything. He looked at Cracker and she met his eyes, then turned her nose toward the ground and sniffed lightly without moving her body. He stared at the ground and then he saw it. One leaf, really only one, didn't quite match the surrounding leaves. He looked around and spotted a bush deep in the jungle. The leaves of that bush matched the one on the ground. It could mean nothing. It could mean only that a leaf from deeper in the jungle had fallen off and over time had migrated right here. Cracker turned to the ground again and sniffed over it, then turned to him. Rick just gestured Raphael forward. Raphael walked quickly to them, but Rick kept him from moving past Cracker. Raphael said, I don't see anything. What does she got? I'm not sure. Look at that leaf. It looks out of place. Raphael looked dubious. So Rick said, she smells something too. Raphael moved back to tell the lieutenant about it. Dubious means doubtful, guys. Rick petted Cracker and whispered, hope you got something, girl, or we're about to be embarrassed. In a moment, a soldier whose name Rick didn't even know knelt on the ground beside him. I don't see anything, the soldier snapped. Rick snapped back. People see what they want. Dogs see what they see. That was a line Rick heard Cody use sometimes. Humans saw it in holes, that means entireties, not piece by piece. They saw a total picture, colored by what they believed. Dogs use their senses to see all the details, uncolored by explanations and beliefs. Fall back, dog handler, the soldier commanded. Rick and Cracker walked back and turned to watch as the soldier studied the leaf. And in a moment, the soldier gingerly cleared away a couple of leaves. Then more and more, Rick saw that the leaves were covering a hole in the ground. The soldier hurried back to confer with the lieutenant, who sent word to Rick that it was a punji pit. Rick asked for permission to look at it. He and Cracker stepped forward and stared into the pit. It was a tiny thing, about a foot deep and two foot square. Sharpened bamboo sticks stuck up from the ground and angled upward from the sides. He heard that sometimes guys jumped out of helicopters and landed right in one of these pits. The points of the sticks were brown, probably covered with human feces, so they would not only stab you, but infect you as well. Cracker glanced into the pit. It looked like one of the pits she'd seen back in wherever they'd been before. Forbidding. She shook her head. She could sense something hanging on her belly and something 
was stuck to one of her paws. She could, couldn't feel it exactly. She just knew something was there. But she was still thirsty, and her stomach felt uneasy. She glanced at Rick. The glance made her forget the thing hanging from her belly and even her thirst. She was, he was staring right at her. Good girl, he said. She pushed her nose under his hand for some petting. He petted her, but not enough, so she pushed her nose under his hand again. Rick removed Cracker's leeches while some destroyed, someone destroyed the pit. He used his bug juice rather than a cigarette so that if Cracker moved, she wouldn't get burned. He fingered bug juice on the back on the black creature on her paw, and it fell right off. Same with the one on her belly, and a third he found inside her thigh. He wanted to blast the leeches with his rifle. Instead, he touched the juice to the leech on his cheek, and it too fell to the ground, fat with his blood. He watched his blood trickle out of the leech, and then he felt all up and down Cracker to see if there were any more. Rick knew, Rick knew Cracker had just earned some respect points. He could see in the way everybody was looking at him and his dog. He knelt beside her and said softly, good girl, good girl. After Rick gave Cracker some water, he turned to her and said, search Cracker, search. Cracker turned to the trail and lifted her snout, pulling scents to the back of her nose. She tilted her snout a bit more to catch a particular scent. She pricked her ears slightly. There was a slight suggestion of something, but she couldn't quite capture it. She waved her nose left and right, trying to find a place where the scent was stronger, but she couldn't quite get it. She took a few steps forward. The scent got stronger, and it seemed to be associated with the sound. She rotated her ears toward the sound. It sounded like, no, it was gone. She glanced at Rick and kept walking. She didn't know how much time passed. She just knew there were many smells, and some of them were very strong, but one of them, but the one she was focused on wasn't very strong. The wind gusted, and she stopped. There it was. And now it was strong. She raised the hair on the back of her neck. A little more sunshine than before had managed to reach through the canopy. Rick liked that, less creepy. Still, his heart beat hard when he saw the hair on Cracker's neck rise. But he didn't feel sick this time, just extra alert. Cracker pointed her nose at some thick bushes about 30 yards away. Rick turned to Raphael and nodded three times. They decided that would be the signal when Cracker gave strong human alert. The slack man sent word down the line. Rick saw soldier after soldier whisper to each other word in, until word reached the lieutenant. Then soldier after soldier sent word back up. Raphael signaled Rick to fall back. Rick wanted to be the one who would get to take a prisoner, if there was one, but he knew this wasn't his job. And then he watched the soldiers creep toward the bush. He felt a brief worry that maybe somebody innocent was hiding behind the bush. Cracker followed Rick back as several other soldiers moved forward. She was pretty excited. She knew there was somebody behind those bushes. And it was exactly like so often before when she and Rick had been in that other place, she recoiled slightly at something in the air. It was familiar from the other place, but she got, she forgot the word Rick had called it. Her eyes sung a bit. Rick knelt, knelt next to her and murmured tear gas. Then it seemed the whole world was shooting and shouting, bam, 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 bam. Get him, did you get him? Got him, watch out. Rick hit the dirt, holding Cracker down. Then sudden silence broken when someone from the front shouted, Medic! Someone else cried out, Call for the dust off. A dust off was a helicopter to take out the wounded. This meant at least one of their guys had gotten hit. As the medic rushed forward, Rick overheard someone saying a sniper had been killed. A couple of soldiers had been wounded, one of them badly. In a minute, men rushed by carrying that soldier, blood already seeping through the bandage on his face. Rick didn't know his name. It was better that way. Another soldier had gotten hit in an arm. He walked by his arm in a sling. He nodded at Rick and winked at Cracker as he moved past. Their mission had been to find them and fix them, but they'd caught a sniper instead. Still, that was a big success. It was getting late. The lieutenant decided to head back, but he let the men take time to remove their leeches. Rick was surprised to see the men pull down their fatigues. Oh, man, leeches stuck the guys all over the place. Rick pulled down his pants and saw a big fat leech right on his legs. Oh man, he had to decide. Did he want to apply bug juice or cigarette to the leech on his legs? He chose bug juice and watched the leech fall to the ground. Cracker growled at it. Whenever the other guys happened to make eye contact with Rick, they nodded. Yes, sir. Rick and Cracker had racked up a lot of respect points today. He didn't expect any more remarks about being a new guy. He said Raphael... He saw Raphael take off his boots. One of Raphael's socks was bright red with blood. 
A leech must have gotten down in his boot and then been squished. Rick had heard that, th that it happened all the time. Those leeches could get anywhere. Insidious little freaks. The medic stopped by with a cigarette hanging from his mouth. He took out another cigarette, lit it, and handed it to Rick. Thanks, Doc, said Rick. Doc nodded, then petted Cracker. Cracker felt the man massage her head. Good girl, he said. That felt nice, but not nearly as nice as when Rick did it.